we are once again out here in the mountains of New England here in Early Access, and as you can see from the map, we went around and got all the lookout points and outposts, and really only shot a couple of things to keep it similar to where we left off on the live stream. But before we head out for a hunt today, I wanted to address something with the weapon customization because I don't recall this being mentioned anywhere, however it is in the Steam post, and it kind of affects how much customization you can do. Now the thing is, I don't know which particular designs are affected, but I'm reading this verbatim from the Steam post. There are two New England Mountains content pack types. Scout, which is free, contains six weapon customization options, includes one of the options that's unlocked when purchasing the New England Mountains. The veteran option, which is paid, includes all options from the Scout and reserve DLC packs, plus seven exclusive options. So I don't know if that is like a separate DLC or how that works, but it certainly doesn't sound like purchasing just New England gets you the veteran part for the customization. I don't know, but I really, I hadn't heard that talked about, and I know that I mentioned on stream that it would be entirely free. I'm questioning that now, and hopefully we get clarification going forward, but I wanted to say that because I knew I said on stream that the weapon thing was a free part of the update. Part of it is for sure, I'm just not certain all of it is. But with that out of the way, let's jump into our second hunt out here on the New England mountains, and the first thing we see out here is an alert gray fox out there about 150 meters away and i think we'll go ahead and take that with our customized 243. luckily there's no real reason to aim high and i did switch this back if you caught the live stream i had the gray paint on the metal i think it just kind of looks better with the standard metal and just doing the i think it's the silver Ridge peaks orange camo for the grip i still think it looks pretty decent and i do want to look some more at kind of what can happen with the customized weapons later on with the trophy lodge and we'll worry about that when we get to the end of the video as for now our i think first or second gray fox on this map at all i do want to say we got one on the stream but we'll again kind of take a look at everything that comes with this update because there is far more than a map and the weapon customization the first thing is you can actually exit out of the harvest screen and the animal stays there you don't have to claim it. And how many times have we accidentally claimed something while trying to spot an animal or something? And sometimes you don't want to claim that animal, whether you're trying to take a screenshot or whatever it may be. It's really nice to be able to back out. So that was a gold. And of course, we can go into the inspect screen, get like a nice up close screenshot if we want. Really get to see it in detail better than the harvest screen has ever shown before. And you still have the x-ray view. Now, I'm not a fan of this iteration of it. I'm not exactly sure why they've done it. But it just, to me, I can't see the details as well. Not that that's a huge deal, but I did definitely prefer the old x-ray view. But you do now, rather than just being able to press escape in the harvest screen, have to hit enter to accept. And now we can move on from that. But I really like the new harvest screen. It was pointed out in the stream chat quite a bit, and I do agree, that maybe the regular harvest screen would look better transparent where you could see the rest of the map behind it. But the inspect screen, I do think, needs that great background. So... I understand why they did what they did, but I wouldn't mind if you sort of had both there. That's a pretty big moose. That might have been a level 5. We had a max weight track, and I'm curious to see if we have the active trail over here. Because I'm beginning to think that's not even the right one. It looked to be the level 5 rack. That's not its track. That is there. That must have been a separate moose then. We'll have to see if we can find it. There are so many things up here in this alpine region. We've got the pheasants, moose obviously, there's black bear, even bobcats. It's a really cool area. And I think it's going to have to be a spot that we spend more time in. But for now, in basically the worst direction to hunt this, we're going to have to try to get this guy. He's actually just a big four. So less panic now that we get to see. Can we make the shot as he's trotting down through there? I think we may have. They have new animations and stuff, and it's a little bit hard to tell. Got ducks going everywhere. I mean, this place, you look at it on the map, there's these tiny little lakes and stuff. It doesn't look like it would be super populated, but it's loaded with stuff. As for our shot, though, it was apparently too far back, which I thought was possible with him moving in at the distance we took the shot at. I'm glad that he is a four. 
Because that shape can definitely be a 5. I think if you just have the Brow Tines. Basically, it's exactly that, and you can get a Diamond Rack. But a 251, just a little far back stomach intestines. I mean, we are... If we go to the Inspect tab here... Maybe, like... An inch from hitting the liver? A bit unfortunate, but again, not that big a deal when it comes to being a... What would have been a gold. I will say, though, thus far, this map really does remind me of Riven Tully Coast. Not so much because of the terrain, but because of the near non-stop opportunities, whether it is the turkeys. And by the way, that blood is a new thing, and I absolutely love it. Really, really well done. And we'll take a look at that at some point with pheasants or quail or something. But you've always got turkeys or ducks or the pheasants or quail. There's always something around, much like how it is as we just fall down the mountain over on Riven Tully Coast. And... I just think it makes for a much more interesting hunt when there aren't those 5, 10, 15 minute lulls going between lakes or wherever you may be doing. No matter where you are, there seems to be something around and that makes a big difference for how fun it is to hunt on a map. But our turkey should be laying right down here. Actually, I think it's the first time we've shot a turkey. We've seen plenty, but anytime we've seen one, there's something else that we are going for. But I think it's going to be nice to have another map with the Easterns. Definitely the first time we shot a turkey, because I was not prepared for how big that was going to be in the harvest screen. That's kind of nice, though. A little bit of an opportunity to appreciate the model a bit more. I'm still hoping one day we get some sort of true beards or something like that to differentiate one to the next. But that's, that's definitely new, and again, any of those opportunities to get to see the models a little bit better, I think, are a good thing. Now, this time... I'm pretty confident we have a max level. That's a level 3 whitetail. And I'm not quite sure why he's alert right now. It could be our fault. And actually, now that I think of it, with our loadout, we're going to have to take it with the 243. And they are taken off for whatever reason. So there must be a bobcat around. That's the only thing on this map that could cause that. There's a highball doe in there too. Man, I wonder... That's our buck, so we're going to have to try to get him first. That's insane. I was really hoping to see some of the rares, like, live on their feet. And during the stream, we got to see a piebald silver buck, a pretty decent-ish silver. Now we have a level 3 and a piebald doe, but let's worry about getting that level 3 down before he spooks again. Because I still don't know where the bobcat is. But we gotta make sure we make a halfway decent shot with the 243 handgun here. He's kinda getting broadside-ish. And I don't know how far over here that he's gonna have to walk. So that's gonna bring him down. We'll probably have to sit here again. And there's a pheasant over there. I mean, I don't mind taking a shot on the move with the doe. That might be good anyway. It's either gonna be a touch forward or into the lungs. And I think it's a touch forward. I'm cool with that. We can go and find our level 3 and maybe she'll be on her way back. Maybe this will be our first diamond on New England. We had the level 9 bobcat. Like the second or third thing we found on the stream. That one trolled us. Maybe this time we have it. You know, I'm trying to remember. I think this happened on Revan to the Coast as well. I want to say our first diamond there was a whitetail. So maybe a repeat of the same thing. I mean, that looks like a rack that should make diamond. Let's find out. He is a diamond. 260 for what is the small rack. I thought he was particularly wide. But of course, it's not just about the antlers this time. We get to take a look at the brand new model. I think it is just the head. And I've talked about it before, but they always, from the very beginning of Call of the Wild, deer in general, whitetail, I even think blacktail kind of had this, and the mule deer is sort of less so. Their faces were just kind of too fat, and you can see this especially looking directly at them. It's much more slender now. I still think maybe it's a bit short, but I can live with that. I just think it's way better, and more realism in the eyes. I just think they did a fantastic job, and I don't know, maybe it's just me. I think the antlers fit better on the, the new head model. To me, it looks better, and I don't know for sure. 
I think this inspect screen may make for some decent thumbnails, we'll have to see. I was really excited about the previous harvest screen, they kind of upped the contrast and all that and made it look a little bit better and that didn't quite work, but with this kind of 3D model, we may be able to do some potential thumbnail stuff. So we'll get a couple of decent screenshots and then what we will definitely do is taxonomize that guy. And actually, you know what? Can we still do that? We can't. Once you tax him, you can't back out. Because I was thinking about taking a screenshot of him on the ground. Once you select that, I guess that is it. But, pretty cool. First diamond on the New England Mountains. Happens to be the same species as our first diamond on Riventuli Coast. And perhaps, somewhere up there, will be our piebald doe. You know, I can't quite say I've experienced this before, but... We track this deer all over the place, and at this point, we just have too much to get to, so we'll maybe try to revisit his drink time a little bit later. But seemingly every time that we would get somewhat close, the deer will have already spooked from another bobcat. It seems like they are just everywhere, and there have been a fair number of bobcat tracks, so it's not too surprising. But I want to kind of get to some other things, including looking a little bit more at the moose, and then I really want to check out Black Bear drink time a little bit at the end here. So naturally, when it comes to New England, the biggest question is whether or not this map is going to be good for grinding Great One Moose. And quite frankly, so far, I'm just not sure what the answer is. On one hand, there are just a ton of moose here. There is no denying that. However, I find most of them on rivers and stuff like this where it's not ideal for grinding. But I do think back to the white Great One grind we did and how we were able to kind of do it in this way where we didn't use tents as much as we do for grinds these days. It was a lot of covering ground on foot and finding our white tail that way and we may be able to do that with the moose. But what I want to do here is take a look at the new hit animation, which is a little bit difficult with the scope at the range that we had. So we may try to get one open sights perhaps or... or something like that but basically we're gonna run down this i guess it's more so a creek than anything and just see if we can find a couple more moose and whatever else may be along here but i genuinely am just trying to decide what is going to be best for this grind i think it's gonna be tough but again i i've voiced my opinion on quite a number of occasions i think the moose are my favorite great one so far and one way or another we have to try to find a way to get one so whether that's on New England or elsewhere, I intend to try to find the most efficient way to do it. But I mentioned this on stream and I really do think it may work. The thing about grinding moose in this particular way is I think it can work a lot better than something like whitetail or even red deer. It would be one thing for a whitetail to be drinking along this creek and just be hidden up in the brush, but Frankly, I don't think a moose could hide that well. I just think you would notice it. And even if you don't see it at first, they run pretty slow. And again, they're huge. When they take off, you'd probably catch them running and at least know they're around. So that's at least what I'm looking at at the moment. We know Revan to the Coast is an option, but moose are really spread out on that map. And Leighton, I think, kind of falls into that same category. And now Medved and Yukon both have wolves to worry about. This map still has the bobcat, so there's still a question as to whether or not it's going to be the best, but I have not seen any time that we're along these creeks or rivers, any bobcats spooking the moose, so maybe that's kind of the way to do it, just a on-the-move grind as opposed to fast traveling around nonstop. I do want to be careful though as well because I don't know if any of the progress in early access here is going to count. And I really don't want to find a Great One Moose in Early Access that we can't actually keep, so not going to try to shoot too many moose, but I do want to have an idea of what we're doing. Well, there's no denying that. That is a level 5 moose, unlike the level 4 earlier, but it's an uneven rack. I can't even remember the last time we had an uneven rack like anything, other than rares. It seemed like it just sort of stopped happening, but... Maybe it's being reintroduced a little bit with this update, we'll have to see. Up to 287 gives him a decent amount of room. Like that left side is always a diamond rack. The right side, I've seen as like a level 4 diamond rack, so maybe it can make it, but let's try to take that with our fancy camo 300, 
I have noticed, he's not tried to drink at all. Maybe something to do with the new animations. I do like everything else. But let's try to heart shot him there. Not sure we got to see the full extent of the animations. I was somewhat excited to get to see it, but unfortunately, having just sort of dove into the water, I think we missed the very end of it. But you did notice there, we made that heart shot, and he still runs forward. And we saw that a bunch on stream. Apparently, even what would have been in the past an instant drop causes them to sort of run forward. But I do think, regardless of the outcome here, we may go and try to find some quail or pheasants or something, because I did want to take a closer look at that. I mean, can we get a shot at one of these ducks? We might be able to get that last one. We couldn't see it from that range, or maybe it doesn't happen with the ducks, I'm not sure. But I mean, kind of cool we got it. As for our moose, though... Just missed it. 271.38 diamond is 275, just about. I'm not too upset at that, because... I'm not a huge fan of those two racks being combined, although they're not that dissimilar, other than the brow tines being wildly different. I did, this was another thing I noticed in the stream. I feel like the lighting in this inspect screen could be better, and maybe that'll change at some point. I don't know if it uses the in-game lighting or what they actually use, because you can tell there's a direction like where the sun is hitting the antlers. But either way, we've had now two trolls on this map, one diamond being the whitetail, and at least, you know, cool, we're getting to see all of the max level animals. But yeah, hard shot at 153, they still sort of run forward, that seems to be a part of the new animations. Our duck is also here, little female golden eye, but let's go and see if we can find one to shoot a little bit closer range, just so we can take a look at what happens, because it looks quite good, I think. So I'm hoping at least, if we can kind of get in here real close, we should be able to see what I'm talking about with the quail, and this is a thing with a couple of species. But if we can just make this shot, it doesn't need to be closer than that, this one might work. Yeah, you get to see, like, the, the blood. And, again, there's a, a distance where it seems to happen, but that was never visible before, and I thought that's a, a nice touch. I may zoom that in and slow-mo it just to be able to see it a little bit better, but especially when you're really close, if you have a, a quail or something fly right over you, you really get to see it, and of course we got to see it pretty decent with the turkey before, and my guess is that any of these species, whether it's the quail or the turkey or probably anything you would shoot potentially out of the air, probably has that happen. I wish one of them would fly back our way, but I think that is just going to be as good as we can do for now. So I think we're going to move on to black bear and just kind of see what we can find in the same areas that we are seeing a lot of moose. Maybe if there's any potential to grind for both on the same map. You know, if it's like that, there may be hope. It's a female, and, and that's fine. We'll let that one go. But it's about the location that it's drinking. And the fact that it's, it's not, you know, 30 yards off the edge of the water. Let's see how things look. And we're going to be moving the other direction because that should be better for the wind. But... I don't know, there, there's a side of this where you can't just run down the entire creek with your binoculars up, I guess you could, but it would cost a fair bit of time to do it that way. I guess that's the one that we spooked, because I don't think moose drink again. According to this, yeah, that's still the old drink time, so that's one that we spooked and that's why he is still there, but you do move slower when you've got the binoculars up, so it's not a really viable option, I don't think to just constantly have the night vision binos held up, but I kind of think you might be able to see them just out in the open if that's where the bears are going to be. I mean, it's, it's tough to say, because most likely they're not going to be standing in the same places every time, but so far they're, they're visible. And that one's not out in the water, but immediately it was visible. Now, I can't actually tell what direction it's facing, I think it's facing us. Let's, uh, let's hope it is. Otherwise, that's going to be a terrible shot. It may still be a terrible shot. There's just something about it, and it could be luck, too, because in this case,
The reason that bear stood out so much is because it's standing beside those rocks that are far lighter in color. It's another male, though. Which is good. I don't know, I, I like what I'm seeing. There's always a, an aspect of... Like, I, I guess hope and optimism when a new map comes out and you're discovering species in new places, because as we know, anytime that you grind anything, things will eventually start to balance out. You may have, like, six male blackbirds in one spot, but it'll even out to where it's probably more like one or two every run most times, other than if you get a freak spot like the Mule Deer Outpost was over on Silver Ridge Peaks. But I kind of like this idea of a sort of moving grind running these creeks and rivers. I think it probably won't be as fast as hopping from tent to tent, but it's similar to what we did over on Layton for the Whitetail. And I find that enjoyable, like not constantly opening the map and trying to jump to the next spot. And I think before we get too caught up in that, we're probably gonna claim these two black bears and head back to the lodge to take a look at our Whitetail and also take a look at the customized weapon in the lodge. But I, that's all I needed to see. Just like a glimmer of hope when it comes to grinding Black Bear here as opposed to on Silver Ridge Peaks. I mentioned before too, I don't know if this progress is going to count anyway, going from early access back to the live game. So I don't want to shoot too many bears and end up with, again, like finding a great one that I can't keep or anything like that. But I'm encouraged, certainly. There's a lot that is yet to be discovered with this, but I think... We're ending this in a good spot. I feel like it could be done. And that's, again, that's all I needed to see. Was a little bit of hope going forward that we can maybe do it. But let's jump back to the Trophy Lodge. And we're going to take a look at two things. One, just the new White Dale. And then number two, the customized weapons in the Lodge. And I think it's probably best we start with the weapons themselves, otherwise I think there's a chance we could forget. And essentially just what I wanted to show is that whatever you customize the weapon to, that's what will display in the lodge. So you can't say customize the 310 different times and display 10 different variants of it. Whatever the current one is, the most recent customization that you've done, that's what will show in the lodge. But I really like that, I think that kind of gives these weapon stands a little more purpose, and I definitely at some point here, after real life hunting season is over, intend to just sit down and probably spend a couple hours customizing weapons, putting them in the lodge, and making all that look good, but I mean you could do a lot. If you really took the time, you could kind of mix and match like things like this particular display. You could have a rifle and two handguns that sort of match, at least kind of fall into a similar category. There's, there's so much you could do and I'm really looking forward to all that. Then. We have our diamond white tail here, and again, it's just, the faces are so much better. It's so much more realistic. The eyes are better too, and I can't describe why, they just are. I think it looks really, really good. And again, I'd love if the faces were a little longer, I think that's still lacking, but it's not by much. And just to compare, oh, I forgot about the piebald doe. We'll go back and get that one of the other days, because we did get the piebald bucks. You can see the piebald skin on a white tail anyway. I guess that'll maybe be in the next video. We'll go back and try to get that dough. Maybe it was something that's not the 243. And uh, finally, I wanted to show the new multi mount. I don't think anybody saw this coming. <laughs> it's a moose and a quail. Specifically, a bull moose and a male Bob White quail. So, any old female diamonds you couldn't add to this multi mount, unfortunately, because we do have a female diamond quail. But. There's a bunch of different poses, and my favorite thing, which I'm sure will get fixed, is if you get too close, the quail disappears. But it's kind of neat. I can't decide if I'm going to actually have one in the main lodge or not, but I sort of like it. It's grown on me the more that I've looked at it. I like the idea. I really thought it was going to be a black bear and a moose. I hope they do that eventually, but... It's a, it's a neat idea and definitely something a little bit different than what we have for other poses, but there's so much with this update, and there's so much more to get to going forward in the next videos, and I'm going to put out a community tab post with like a, a graphic basically looking at the upcoming content schedule because I think 
the plan is going to be to stream this map again tomorrow morning. And then I think replacing the stream on Monday will be that. Monday there will be a video, and then videos will kind of get back to the normal schedule 5 p.m. on Tuesday. Just to try to get as much New England content out there as possible, as well as still hunting in real life, because real life rifle season is still going on here in PA. But anyway, that is officially going to do it for this video. So as always, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.